Grace and peace to you and welcome to worship at Eastminster Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you could join us for this time of worship. My name is uh, Pastor Josh. With just a few announcements of the body uh, this morning. Uh, this this uh, month, if you are planning on ordering uh, grocery cards for March, uh, they will need to last all the way through April 7th. So this is a fundraiser that we participate in in the church. Um, and if you're interested in doing that, there's information on the bulletin. And you can download that from the website. Also, the brownie bakers, that the brownies are due March 4th. And just as a reminder, there was a, a slight change with that information that you need to individually wrap uh, those brownies so that they can be handed out that way. With all of that, let us focus on God and worship the Lord our God together. Will you join me in the call to worship that's taken from the books of Romans and Mark? Our faith depends upon the grace of God. Praise the Lord who gives life to the dead. Jesus calls us to be his disciples. We take up the cross to follow him. In the name of Christ, I urge you, be reconciled to God. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Let us pray. Merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you and one another in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. There is a brokenness in us that reflects the brokenness of our world, and it is deep and broad. Yet, in your mercy and healing grace, you can restore us and empower us to walk in the way of Christ. In your mercy and healing grace, you can reform our paths towards love and justice for our neighbors and for the earth. In your mercy and healing grace, you can make your peace, your shalom, a reality in our communities and lives. Amen. Listen so that you may live. The steadfast love of the Lord never fails. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. boys and girls. Hope you're doing well today. I just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk with you. Um, if you'll notice, we're over here near the baptismal font, and there's something that I want you to see on top of the baptismal. You'll see this little cross that's on here. And if you look around the sanctuary, I know for some of you it's been a little while since you've been in the sanctuary, but you'll see in different spots different crosses around the sanctuary. We have a cross on the banners over here on either side, and the, then a cross in the center window. The cross is an important symbol in our faith. This is a little cross from the wall, my wall in my office. This was actually my mom's when she was a, a little girl. Crosses. Jesus tells us in the scripture that we're going to read that we should every day pick up our cross and carry it. Now, do you think Jesus meant we're supposed to walk around with a cross like this? I think he meant something a little bit different. I think the cross is meant to be a reminder of Jesus' love and Jesus' statement to us to each day be more loving, more caring, and more faithful. To show love to our friends, to our families, to people in our classes, those around us. To show care to those people in need that might, might, might be in need of help. To show care to them. And to be faithful each and every day a little bit more. We'll be faithful by praying by reading our Bible as a family. That's what Jesus meant when he talked about carrying our cross, to be more loving, to be more caring, and to be more faithful. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we ask you to help us to be more loving, more caring, and more faithful. May we follow you with our whole lives. In Jesus' name.
Guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Bye. The Old Testament lesson today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 14, verses 1 through 7, and then 15 and 16. Hear the word of God. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you, and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sari, your wife, you shall, know, you shall not call her Sari, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, kings of people, shall come from her.
Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy Reading from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Jesus warned them to keep it quiet, not to breathe a word of it to anyone. He then began to explain things to them. It is necessary that the Son of Man proceed to an ordeal of suffering, to be tried and found guilty by the elders, high priests, and religion scholars, to be killed, and after three days, rise up alive. He said this so simply and clearly that they couldn't miss it. But Peter, Peter grabbed Jesus in protest. Turning and seeing his disciples wavering, wondering what to believe, Jesus confronted Peter. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. Calling then the crowd to join his disciples, Jesus said, Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I will show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to saving yourself your true self. What good would it be to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? What could you ever trade your soul for? If, anyone of, if any of you are embarrassed over me and the way I'm leading you, when you get around your fickle and unfocused friends, know that you'll be an even greater embarrassment to the Son of Man when he arrives in the splendor of God his Father with an army of holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, send your Spirit to us. Open our hearts that we might discern your word among, the, among Scripture so that we might hear your word and be formed in the way of Christ for one another and for our world. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a wonderful children's book by Mo Willems called Edwina, the Dinosaur Who Doesn't Know She Is Extinct. The story goes that everyone in town loves Edwina. Edwina would play with the neighborhood children. She would help anyone who needed help. She would even help little old ladies cross the street by carrying them on her back. After all, she is a dinosaur. But her most favorite thing in the world that Edwina liked best was she loved to bake chocolate chip cookies for everyone in town. 
Everyone in town loves Edwina, except for Reginald von Hooby Dooby. Reginald von Hooby Dooby knew just about everything about just about everything. He liked to give reports to his class about all the things that he knew. He loved to impress his teachers and his students in his classroom. So he decided one day that he would tell his class that dinosaurs were extinct. He went to the front of the room and began to make his presentation. And no one in his class would believe him. They all knew Edwina. And they would not listen to him. No one in the whole town would listen to him. The only one who would listen to Reginald was the kind, gentle Edwina the dinosaur. She listened to Reginald explain that she was extinct. But Edwina simply didn't care she was extinct. In the end of the story, Reginald von Hooby-Dooby decides to go along with Edwina and simply bake cookies and love the people of the town. I appreciate the message translation of this scripture. I think it really helps to heighten the tension that we hear. It really helps us to hear the conflict that Peter is experiencing in this moment. This passage takes place on the heels of Peter professing that Jesus is Messiah. And Jesus again begins to explain that it is necessary for the Son of Man to die to be tried, found guilty by the religious leaders of his day, and die and come back to life. Jesus is absolutely crystal clear with his disciples. And the clarity for them causes a deep tension. The disciples would have been very used to danger. To live in Galilee at this time was to understand danger. It was to understand revolution. Leaders would appear from time to time. They would lead a revolution. And the holy people would get hopeful. They would begin hoping that God would come and God would deliver them. And then suddenly their hopes would be dashed the leader of the movement would be crucified. The disciples knew the danger that Jesus was in, the danger that they were in. John the Baptist was a reminder of that danger. But Jesus insisted it was necessary for him to experience these things. Jesus is telling his disciples, we are not just going to live in a dangerous moment. We are going to run headlong into that danger. That there is a cost. A cost for discipleship. A cost to follow Jesus. Peter reacts out of self-preservation And I believe out of love for Jesus, he grabs a hold of Jesus and wants him to insist that this must not happen. But Peter is not listening to Jesus. He is not thinking about the things of God. His concerns are elsewhere. He is missing the fact that Jesus' death will usher in the kingdom of God. God's kingdom. 
that will defeat deeply rooted evil. God's kingdom that will come through the death of Jesus. Some of the most convicting words in this passage is Jesus' statement to Peter. You have no idea how God works. I believe that this is a word for the church. We have long thought we knew how God worked, who God liked and didn't like, but it is high time we recognize we cannot comprehend the mystery and the magnitude of God that our God is a God of surprises. In the devotional series, Disabling Lent, an anti-ableist Lenten devotional, Dr. Aaron Rafferty of Princeton Theological Seminary shares the following. She writes that the promise of Lent that comes year after year is an opportunity to follow God differently. To recognize that Christianity is not a one-off moment, but a fluid journey of confession, of repentance and growth that requires us to take up our cross she writes that it comes down to learning to perceive myself and my sins more clearly and that at times a rebuke is an invitation to a deeper journey. That the question is, are we willing to follow Jesus even if we have no idea how God works? Are we willing to follow Jesus if it involves listening to people whom the church has ignored, harmed, or even oppressed? Are we willing to listen to these holy rebukes? Jesus calls the crowd together. He issues a warning and an invitation. If you follow Jesus, you must follow him and allow him to lead. It is in following Jesus that we find our life. It is the radical call of the kingdom of God. That we find God's kingdom not just by changing a few little things, but by overturning human assumptions about power and glory, overturning assumptions about what is truly important in life. And what is important in this world? It is about daily working alongside Jesus to usher in the kingdom of God. We are living in a moment where some would tell us that the church of Jesus Christ is like Edwina, extinct. A dinosaur living in a modern world and the easiest thing in the world is to be like Peter, to miss the movement of God, to act only out of self-preservation. But instead, we are invited by Jesus to participate in the unfolding kingdom, to ask the question, what is God doing in our community? What is God calling us to as a people this day? I was struck the other day by a story I read. It was about the gallery uh, furniture store in Houston, Texas. The owner of the store, Jim Mattress Mack, 
was driving to church on Valentine's Day when he saw a police officer covering a man with a sheet. The man had frozen to death on the street that night. Jim decided he needed to do something about this, so he opened his three furniture stores to the public as warming houses. He had as many as 800 people coming each day and over 350 staying the night in his stores, sleeping on the furniture, getting a meal, having some coffee, and staying warm. He reached into his own pocket and paid for his staff and food vendors to come into the stores to provide meals for these people and run a temporary shelter. And what I think is really, truly interesting about this, he did this in 2005 after Hurricane Katrina, in 2017 after Hurricane Harvey, and again in 2019 after Tropical Storm Imelda. Mattress, Mattress Mac said, we've benefited from the public support over the years. It's our obligation to open our doors and let people come and get a respite from the storm. It is the right thing to do. Isn't this the call of the church? To recognize that we don't understand how God works, but we know that God is always faithful. to hear the voice of those on the margins and to respond as a faithful community of believers. To pick up our cross and daily answer Jesus' call to us. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, your faithfulness is abundant. May we, your church, see that each and every day. And may we, your church, faithfully live out that call, the call to pick up our cross, the call to hear the voices from the margins. The call to usher in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us affirm our faith together. 
by reading the words from a brief statement of faith. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human and fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor, release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, calling all to repent and believe the gospel, Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is a fountain of good gifts in our lives. It is an opportunity that we have to return a portion of that as an act of praise, to God. We thank you for your continued faithfulness to Eastminster. May God bless you. There are several concerns of the church this morning. We'd encourage you to send in your prayer concerns into the office so that we can be in prayer for you and for your families and your concerns. There are a few concerns that have been named. This day we're in prayer for Anna Baker, Reverend Michael Campbell, Cade Curran, Connor Hensley, D. Hoyt, Ted Levanko, Judy Lightfoot, Alan McIntosh, Brian Page, The Peck Family, Linda Williams, and Don Wonders. Let us go to God in prayer this day. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray. May you guide this time of prayer by your Holy Spirit so that, your, that our prayers may serve your will and show your steadfast love to this world. God, our creator, we pray for the world that you have made, the world that you have blessed us with. God, we ask you to overthrow evil powers in this world. Right what is wrong. Feed, the satis feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice. So that all of your children, O oh God, may freely enjoy your creation. May joyfully sing your praises, O oh God. Gracious God, you called us to be the church, the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us faithful in service, in breaking bread together, in proclaiming the good news of the world. So that people in our community may see your love and connect to your community. 
Eternal God, you sent Jesus Christ to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. And there are so many ways in which we feel that division this day. And God, this day we ask you to send your peace. Put down greed and pride and anger. Which turn one another against each other. God, may we listen faithfully to one another. May we hope in a better future together. Speed the day, God, when your peace will envelop the earth. God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, our, our neighbors first. Remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people so that your children may be reconciled one to another. That those we fear, resent, or threaten may live faithfully in your peace. Mighty God, we ask you this day to direct those who make and administer and judge our laws, those that are in authority over us. Guide them by your wisdom that they may lead in the way of righteousness. Give vision for all those who serve to govern with peace, with goodwill and justice, that we may foster understanding in this world. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. We ask you this day to look with compassion on those who are sick, on those who are struggling on those who are in need of just some love. And this day, we especially lift up to you Anna and Michael, Cade, Connor, Dee, Ted, Judy, Alan, Brian, the Peck family, Linda, and Don. Cheer them by your word, O oh God. Bring healing as a sign of your grace. Comfort those who grieve, O oh God. Those who experience sorrow. And Jesus, we ask you to give them the assurance that neither life nor death nor things present, nor things to come, can ever separate us from your love, O oh God. God of compassion, bless all those we love, our friends, our family. Bless the families that are struggling through this pandemic, trying to teach and navigate work Bless those healthcare workers on the front lines. May all people be drawn together by your spirit. And God, it is in that spirit of compassion that we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Pray this day that you would know the God of love and the God of compassion. Go into God's world. In the power of the Spirit, resist evil. Stand for good. Be a blessing to your neighbor. Lift up the brokenhearted. Stand with the oppressed. And let all that you do be about love. Amen. Thank you.